This is Business Incorporated. Thank you for joining us. I'm Chimizi Obi Iwagwan. Coming up, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and U.S. top list of world's best stock markets despite low governance score. Ivory Coast targets natural rubber output of 2 million tons by 2023. Plus, Kenya Aviation Workers Union tells members to stay away from Kenya Airways operations on October the 28th over pay talks. I will start off with that report by Bloomberg and Renaissance Capital suggesting that some of the world's best stock market returns have come from countries with worse environmental, social and governance score. According to the report, Qatar stock soared by 27% in dollar terms to lead gains despite having the worst ESG score among emerging markets. At the same time, Israel emerged as the most lucrative developed market, which has the lowest ESG score in absolute terms, and the United States when adjusted per capita. Among frontier markets, Saudi Arabia, which is in the Middle East, of a, in the middle of a diplomatic crisis, can point to a 9.3% rally in the Tadawu All Share Index despite a low ESG score. And let's see the numbers coming from the African stock market, starting with Nigeria, where the All Share Index appears to be sustaining the positive momentum with a 0.62% jump at intraday. Now, looking at all the numbers there, the major African markets we track here were all in the red at intraday. South Africa lost 1.6%, while Egypt was down 0.29%. The care boss closed 0.08% lower on Monday. And the reverse seems to be the case in the Middle East, where all the major indices are up at intraday except the Qatar index. The Abu Dhabi index was up 0.28%, while the Dubai financial market was 0.21% higher, also at intraday. The Saudi Tadawal index was up 0.44%. And in Europe, stocks opened lower today as diplomatic tensions in Saudi Arabia, concerns over Italy's budget and ongoing Brexit talks all depressed market sentiment. Let's now cross over to the Frankfurt Stock Exchange, where my colleague, Paul Brees is standing by to tell us more. Good afternoon, Paul. Good to see you. Well, it's a tense world in politics right now. Donald Trump threatens a new Cold War-style nuclear arms race. There's a fallout with Saudi Arabia over the killing of a Saudi journalist. Looming standoff between Italy and Brussels. And let's not forget the trade dispute between the U.S. and China. Is it too much for markets in Asia and Europe to handle at this time? Well, Jimmy, the worries have piled up and piled up and piled up and piled up. And this morning, it did seem like it's uh, it's too much and investors uh, ran scared. Uh, it started off in Asia, where the Hang Seng was down 3%, Nikkei and Kospi in, in South Korea, a minus 2.5%. And um, not just there, also the MSCI Emerging Markets was down a minus 1.8%. Uh, here in Germany, you can see the DAX behind me right now is at minus 1.78. It was down more than 2% um, at its lowest point in two years, actually. Similar picture with the Euro stocks uh, 600 also down to its lowest in uh, two years. Uh, October is, um, well, has a reputation for being a very volatile month before people hope for a rally at the end of the year. But for now, gold and government bonds are what people are looking for risk-free investment. Dave Caven. And where the EU Commission is expected to decide on Italy's budget proposal, that's in about an hour from now. What's the expectation? Well, even Italy actually expects the EU to uh, reject its budget plan. That's not um, just because the deficit of minus uh, 2.4%. It's actually more because of the, uh, the debt the, that Italy has piled up. Um, it now has a 130% uh, debt um, um, compared to its GDP, and that is against EU rules. And it would be the first time, actually, that 
that the EU Commission rejects a budget plan. Um, that, of course, would mean more confrontation between the EU and, um, and Italy. However, the country has learned from the past. A lot of um, other countries that have uh, violated the, the debt regulations or the deficit regulations, like Germany, like France, they were not punished. So what incentive is there really for Italy to adapt its budget? Now, a judge in the U.S. has denied Monsanto's request to scrap a $250 million punitive damages to a former groundskeeper. But isn't it potentially devastating for the German parent company Bayer? The problem is the judge, well, they, they did say you have to pay 200 million less and that could be a positive sign, but no, the problem is it upheld the ruling um, by the jury that basically said there is a connection between this product, uh, this Monsanto, uh, Monsanto product Roundup, and the cancer this man um, uh, has. And Bayer was not able to break that link and to break free of, of this. That means it's going to encourage a lot of other people um, to also file lawsuits of this kind. There are actually, just in the U.S., 8,000 of these cases um, against uh, um, Monsanto and its parent company, uh, Bayer, uh, from Germany, is facing a lot of potential fines here um, that could really hurt the company. And the question now is, was it really such a clever idea for Bayer to buy Monsanto earlier this year for 66 billion euros. That price tag is going to go up um, a lot if any of these lawsuits follow through. All right, thank you for your time, Paul. Hope to see you tomorrow.